Hey guys, it's Melissa Mara with Vintage Bee Design, and today I am in a bit of a melancholy mood, and it is, it's kind of yucky outside, and decided that to get me in a better mood, I would paint. I was given a pair of these side tables, and they're in pretty rough shape. Uh, I'll try to do a little zoom in in a moment, but there's all kinds of nicks and scratches. These were obviously um, not well taken care of, this is probably MDF. They're from um, a big box store. And I do like the shape and the size though. So I thought I could get something fun and creative done with it, which is what I'm gonna do. Because there are so many nicks and scratches and I don't feel like um, trying to work it out on this sort of bumpy surface, I'm gonna be adding a lot of texture and I think that will smooth it all out. Also, I tried to take off the hardware but they're kind of very odd. I've never seen hardware like this before. So I've decided I am going to paint over the hardware. Don't give me crap, I tried to take it off. Just not happening. But that's okay, because often when we do a blended look, we want the hardware um, to blend in anyway, and we'll be doing that on this piece. To get started, the first thing we need to do is we need to clean the piece thoroughly. First, I'm just gonna give it a good wash with some Dixie Belle White Lightning. You simply add the crystals to some warm water then clean it and then we'll need to clean it with clean water afterwards to make sure we get all of the residual cleaning product off of it before we start painting. Because this has sort of a melamine surface, I wanna make sure that the paint and everything I do sticks really well. So I'm gonna be using some of Dixie Belle's Slick Stick. Slick Stick is perfect when you have smooth or glossy surfaces and it works great on glass and vinyl and um, these melamine type things. I would also consider using it if you're painting slick tile. Really anything that's shiny, Dixie Belle Slick Stick is a great option. It goes on just like paint and you just need one to two nice thin coats. Remember, a thin coat is always better than a thick coat. All right, so I don't have a plan exactly yet, but I have decided I'm gonna use this new Maxi Transfer by Redesign with Prima, Magnolia Garden, and we have a couple of matching molds, so I might try to work some of those in too. What I've done is I've sort of looked at the overall colors and I've decided that I'm gonna start off with Gypsy Queen, which can you kind of see around the edge there? So I'm gonna mix some Gypsy Queen with some salt wash and then we'll go from there. We're just gonna kind of feel our way through this. No! Ignore my mess. This is what happens when I do it on camera. I'm gonna add just enough powder to make it thick consistently like cake batter. Now with the pouncing motion, I'm just gonna take large scoops of my mixture and pounce it all over this piece. At first I thought I might do like a grass and a sky area. And then as I kind of stepped back, I decided I would just do the entire piece in this gypsy green. All right, we're ready to move on to the next part. And because I'm using DIY paint, Sometimes, because the paint is water activated, I'm gonna put a lighter color, kind of an off-white creamy color over the top of it. I don't want there to be any chance that the, the light color gets a green hue to it. So I'm just gonna pour some of DIY's liquid patina into a little bowl here. And I have one of these blue sponges from Dixie Belle and I have wet it and then wrung out all the water and I'm just gonna pop it in here like this, rub off most of it so it doesn't have a terrible lot of uh, liquid patina on it. And then I am simply going to rub it over and give it a very thin, nice top coat. This is actually how I prefer to top coat most of my pieces. It's how I find that I get the best coverage without pulling paint off. So this is one of my big tricks when I'm finishing furniture it's how I like to, especially if I'm doing long flat surfaces like tabletops, um, the blue sponge is my trick for getting the best coverage and uh, making sure everything adheres really well. If you're anything like me, you love getting fresh flowers, but then in about a week, sometimes less, 
They're just like wilty and dead and they're very expensive, especially roses. So I was really excited when I got an email from Rose Forever regarding getting ample of some roses and I was able to pick out the ones that I wanted. The, they came in this little velvet box and this is actually a dozen real roses and they are yellow roses, which are my favorite. And let you see them, how beautiful they are. They are incredibly beautiful. And I can't believe how good they smell. They smell exactly like fresh roses. They are dried roses. They're absolutely stunning. And according to the package, because of the way that they are dried, they will last for years. And I actually love the little, the little box um, velvet and there are different boxes to choose from, but I feel like black is always classy and fits in almost all decor. And so that's why I chose this one. And I'm really excited because I do love having fresh flowers. I think I'll put them on my bedside table or perhaps my dressing uh, table, but for now they're gonna go in the dining room until I clean those areas. And it is gonna be Easter dinner here at my house in a little while. So I think I'll have them right where the guests will see them and they can smell them and it'll make my dining room smell really delicious, you know, until the food comes. Anyway, I'll leave a link below and a discount code for you. And if you love getting flowers or giving flowers, consider this. They're actually about the same price or less than sending um, live roses. They're going to last a lot longer. So your gift recipient or yourself, if you're giving them for yourself, will get to enjoy them a lot longer. Yeah. So my goal on this piece, I've decided, is I really want to have some good texture. Again, I'm going to be working with the new Magnolia Garden uh, Maxi Transfer from Rita's Ever Prima. It comes with two sheets of 12 by 12 transfers and I have laid gypsy green with DIY paint down with a layer of top coat and I wanted to use crinoline from DIY but I don't have enough to finish both these pieces and I don't feel like waiting to go to the store um, to finish them. So I've gone ahead and picked up some Dixie Belle Sandcastle which I have in stock and it is a little bit warmer than crinoline but it'll do nicely. The nice thing about this is it is an all-in-one, which means that I won't have to top coat it when I'm done with this. I will actually after I do the transfer, but between the layer, this layer and the transfer, I won't have to top coat. Now, because I want to add more texture than is already here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a relatively flat brush. This is actually an old purdy brush. I have, um, I would have used one of my Klingon brushes, flat Klingon brushes, but there at my house and not here where I'm working. So I'm just getting a little bit on my brush and I'm taking most of it off. This is going to be a heavy dry brush and I'm actually going to do this in sort of not a basket weave pattern but I'm going to sort of apply it like with cross hatching so that we're getting some additional texture lines in it and I may or may not choose to do full coverage but this is how I'm going to apply this. Again, heavy dry brush. On this round, the other thing I'm gonna make sure I do is anywhere that I could see that original white, I'm going ahead and painting that area with this color as well. All around the edges um, and in these little sort of cracks that you can see in here as well. Okay, so I told you when I started this that I didn't have a plan. And that's 100% true. So after doing the heavy dry brush with some Dixie Belle Sandcastle, that's Dixie Belle Silk, which is an all-in-one, I've decided I'm going to come in with some Hampton Olive, which is also a Dixie Belle Silk all-in-one. Um, it's kind of got this nice olivey color, and I think it's going to go really nicely with my magnolias. And I haven't completely decided I'm going to start off by doing some dry brushing in the corner, but there's a good chance that I'm gonna put some random dry brushing, and I do really mean a, a lighter dry brush than this, 
in some random places just to give it a little texture. We'll see kind of how it goes. I do have a rag and I've decided to go with my 045 Klingon. It's a nice round brush. I just find that is gonna be easier when I'm trying to swirl here in the corners. So I'm gonna try and get really almost all the paint off of my brush. And then I'm gonna to try to take even more of it off on my paper towel so that this is a true dry brush. Okay, and I'm gonna start up here in the corner and I'm just gonna start swirling it very lightly in the corners to get some depth and dimension. What are you thinking? You liking that so far? I think I'm liking that. And so I'm definitely gonna do it all around the edges and that's gonna give me a little bit of a dirty, grungy look. And I do think I'm probably gonna do it around some of these peaks just to give, I really like how this looks up here. So I'm, we'll see, I'm gonna go around the whole outside and we'll see what happens after that. So one of the things that I wanted to say about doing this when you are doing the dry brushing is you wanna be sure that you are going feather light. So you are putting zero pressure on the brush. You are simply gliding it over the surface. Otherwise, you're going to end up with big, heavy streaks. So really, you're just holding your brush very lightly and swirling almost above the surface. You're just barely letting it touch. Okay, so now I'm going to tell you one of my very favorite techniques, and it involves a really unusual item. A toothbrush. So when you're done with your toothbrushes and you get a new one, this is a great thing to keep your old one for. So I've put some white paint in here. I think this is Dixie Belle's salt water silk all in one. And I've just put a little bit on my bristles and now I'm gonna flick it all over my piece. And I'll bring you in close so you can see it in a minute but it's just adding a whole bunch of little white dots everywhere. Sort of like a, a universe in space. It's that time again where Redesign with Prima has come out with some more amazing transfers and molds of varying sizes. The lavenders are to die for. And overall, this entire collection just feels perfect for the season. I think these patterns are ones that are going to be classic and timeless, including a couple of new ones by Kasha and an amazing Magnolia collection with new transfers and molds. If you haven't seen it yet, be sure to go to vintagebedesign.com and click on the new release tab to see all the new amazing stuff. Okay, so I did show it, but I did go ahead and sand everything down with 220 grit sandpaper. And you might see some areas where I got a little aggressive with the sandpaper. And um, it's okay because I'm doing the white flex, it's gonna blend it all in. Plus, of course, my magnolias are, you know, kind of an off-white with some white tips. So I think it's all going to blend in. Now I'm going to work on placing these. I'm going to start by just cutting them apart off the papers. And I kind of played a little bit with them so all of them attach to get an idea of where I want my first one. By the way, these are great because they've got a little color chart here, which can actually help you match the paint if you want to. Okay, so I'm just going to cut off these. And I was thinking this first one I might have coming off around here so that it's not really um, hitting either of the door handles and it looks like it's kind of maybe growing off from the side. I might bend it out just a little bit like that. And then I can use a razor blade to kind of cut across here. So I'm going to start here. Because my surface is very lumpy, I'm just gonna try and be super careful laying it down. And I'm gonna cut this off too, cause knowing me, I'll try to attach it to the piece. Okay. So once it sticks, it sticks, you're done. 
So I'm gonna just try to get it however I'm kind of liking it. I think this is good here. And so I'm just gonna try and go, I'm not gonna try and get the whole thing stuck down at once. We're gonna um, just sort of work around these curves rather than try to get the whole thing down at once. So I'm just gonna start where it seems easy. And if I need to, I'll use my razor blade to cut, to kind of bend around things, to create less tension. Rather than trying to do the whole thing at once, if I cut it apart, I am less likely to screw it up. I'm gonna apologize for the sound. I have my Glowforge going in the back, making some charcuterie boards. And um, the screen is crooked because I want you to kind of be able to see both areas. And now I'm gonna show you the next trick when you're working transfers on textured surfaces, this is your new best friend. You can see mine is pretty worn. Um, I've been using it a lot, but this is a burnishing pad. They come, Prima sells them and Dixie Bell sells them. They come two to a pack and they're pretty inexpensive, but they're very, um, they're soft, but they've got a lot of texture to them. And the way they work is basically, you're just going to, after you've rubbed it down with your finger or the back of the paper, however you rub it down typically, you are just gonna lightly rub this over and you're gonna be able to use this to work this into all the little nooks and crannies that your texture it has created. And this is gonna give your um, vinyl transfer here a little bit more texture to it. And the other thing it's gonna do is it's gonna get rid of the halo that you often see in transfers. And here's a quick reminder that you can follow us on all social media at Vintage Bee Design. And we have a community in Facebook called Creating the Hive or Creative Con Vintage Bee. And I've just started this month a new coaching group. Membership is only $20 a month. There's lots of discounts. Links in the description below. Let's get back to crafting. Okay, it's the next day and I am back. I have finished all of the outside except for the top and I do plan on spray painting the legs also. But I'm really pleased with how the front and the sides have come out. And I just feel like when I open the cabinet, it's a little bit boring. So I wanted to do just a little bit of updating and I've decided that I am going to go with, this is the Finnebear decorative paper and this, what I'm choosing is Musica. And you actually get six sheets of paper here. And it is a little bit thinner paper. I'm not sure what the weight is. Let me see if it says. I don't see the weight, but these are 27 and a half by 19.7 inches. And as you can see, they're quite large. And I really like this pattern. And I think overall the colors blend well. Music has nothing to do with this piece, um, but I think that on the doors, it is just gonna add a little bit of pop. Mostly it's gonna add a little bit of color and texture. And I've been all about the texture on this project. Work. I've already got white on the inside, so that's going to be fine. I don't need to paint it. You do wanna have a basic um, light background color when you're decoupaging. I'm gonna pour some liquid patina into a bowl, just like we did earlier. I'm gonna use my damp blue sponge, just like before when we did the top coat. And I am gonna go ahead and I'm gonna apply, this is so easy when you're applying, especially on a flat surface. And because this paper is thin, um, I'm really probably only going to get one shot at this. I want to go ahead and do the whole thing so I do not accidentally tear it. I'm going to try to get it as close 
as I can to what I want. And I am gonna work it down. Now, I never care if it's a little bit wrinkly. That doesn't bother me at all. But I am gonna go ahead and just carefully spread it down from the top, not letting the whole thing touch. So just very gently work it down, trying to avoid too many bubbles or wrinkles. But like I said, wrinkles and bubbles don't bother me. Okay, and now I am going to go ahead and cut off the rest of this. Now we'll go ahead and put another layer of the decoupage medium right over the top. This will help seal it in and then we will sand and trim the rest off when it's dry. Doing this with the blue sponge is really nice because it does help um, smooth it out and it doesn't tear. You have less likelihood of tearing than you would if you were using, say, a brush. Okay, our paper is dry. And um, so now I'm just gonna go ahead and get this off of here. I'm gonna use some 220 grit sandpaper and it really is as simple as sanding off. Now you wanna be sure that you go this way and not this way when you're sanding. Otherwise you are going to risk pulling the paper off. So always work away from the edge that you wanna go, but it really is like, you wanna make sure you don't do this here, right? So. You just need to make sure that you're you're pushing away from your surface. Now, to make this blend a little bit better, I think I want to, um, this is a little yellow for my space. I think I'm gonna go back and do what I did around here with the Hampton Olive, um, just to kind of make this blend a little bit better with my piece. Once again, the key is to have a very dry brush. And when you think it's dry enough, take off some more paint then have a very, very light hand. Now it's time to address that weight melamine top. I have the slick stick on it already and I'm gonna use that same sponge technique that we've used for all of the top coat and decoupaging. And this time I'm gonna use Dixie Belle's Voodoo Gel Stain, which is water-based. I will simply layer it and layer it and layer it. I did use a heat gun to help this process along a little more quickly. I also did a little stippling around the edge and then sort of worked that in. And this helped where I tended to push the sponge off the end, leaving a white mark along the sides. I've said several times through this that I've been winging it and this is no exception. I decided the brown was just too flat. So I wanted to add a little more dimension. In this case, I decided to add Voodoo Gel Stain in Bayou Moss and in Black Magic. And I just sort of sprinkled them on. And again, using that same blue sponge, I am just gonna streak. I did two coats of this. When the second level was done, I felt like it was the perfect amount of texture and depth. So I let it dry and then I sealed it with three coats of Gator Hide in the exact same way. I really love how this finish came out. That green was perfect. I can't wait to hear what you think about the final transformation of these side tables. And he would ask for me to do more furniture videos. So do a girl a favor and be sure to hit like, subscribe, and thumbs up this video so that I'll do more furniture. Typically my furniture videos don't do well. And so if you really wanna see more, give a girl some love and some encouragement to continue doing these. Otherwise it's back to the smalls.